Artificial intelligence consumes a lot of energy, both during training and during operation. We've heard a lot about this. Indeed, some Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, recently said that we'll need small modular nuclear reactors just to power all those AIs. Well, hold that thought. Today I want to look at how much energy these AIs really need because a new paper just delivered some concrete numbers. And then I want to explain why I think the energy consumption isn't the real problem. When we talk about how much energy AIs need, we have to distinguish between the training of the model and its regular use in which user queries are worked off. The training is stunningly energy intensive. It's hard to get concrete numbers, but in 2022, a group of scientists estimated that the training of GPT-3 has eaten up at least 1,300 megawatt hours. That's enough to power about 130 US homes for an entire year. And since then, large language models have only gotten larger. All that energy is expensive. Again, we don't have exact numbers, but some insiders have estimated that the training of GPT-4 has eaten up about $100 million, if not more. One way to get a sense of the cost is to have a look at the recent lawsuit of Musk against OpenAI. Yes, Elon Musk is suing OpenAI. It's a rather unfortunate fallout between the two parties, which once worked together. In a recent blog post on the matter, OpenAI writes, in early 2017, we came to the realization that building AGI will require vast quantities of compute. We began calculating how much compute an AGI might plausibly require. We all understood we were going to need a lot more capital to succeed at our mission, billions of dollars per year, which was far more than any of us, especially Elon, thought we'd be able to raise as the non-profit. Again, we don't get any concrete numbers about whatever they estimated, but it gives you a sense of the money we're talking about, billions of dollars per year. The story of the lawsuit is that OpenAI was originally set up as a non-profit, but that just didn't bring in the necessary money, so it was later restructured to a for-profit. Musk wanted OpenAI to become part of Tesla. OpenAI said no. Musk got out in 2018. Microsoft got in in 2019. OpenAI became a huge success in 2022. Now Musk wants part of the pie and is suing OpenAI for not fulfilling the original contract that said something about being a non-profit. You might find this a tangential drama, but it highlights just how huge amounts of money we're talking about here. That's for the training. Now let's talk about the operations. In December, a group from Hugging Face and Carnegie Mellon University published a preprint with estimates for how much energy various AI models use for certain operations. This paper has not yet been peer-reviewed. The authors ran tests on 88 different models for a number of different tasks, including text prompts and image generation. They then estimated the energy use and the carbon dioxide emissions caused by that. A typical amount they found for text use is of the order of a few milliwatt hours per task or a few watt hours for a set of a thousand. For image generation, however, the energy requirement is about 1000 times as high. Now we're talking about a few watt hours per item. That means if you use AI to generate one image, that takes up almost as much energy as charging your smartphone. Oops. What does this mean for our future energy needs? According to the International Energy Agency, data centers now account for roughly 1 to 2 percent of global electricity use. That's something in the ballpark of 400 terawatt hours energy per year, which is about as much as the energy consumption of the entire United Kingdom. The increased use of artificial intelligence together with the continued crypto mining is likely to make data centers even more energy consuming. By 2026, the agency says, it could be more than twice as much as presently. Then again, there are many efforts underway to make AI more energy efficient by using dedicated hardware that's particularly suited to the task. There's also a negative feedback that comes from using all these AI computations to make computations more energy efficient. A neat example for this comes from a few years back when DeepMind trained a system to help cool Google's data centers more efficiently. But when everything is said and done, 
I expect the energy use to go up just because that's the way things normally go. So basically, I agree with Atman. Bring up the small modular reactors. I also think, however, that there's a much more obvious problem hidden behind this energy intensity, which is cost. Building big AIs is so expensive and requires so much maintenance that eventually there'll be only a few big ones globally owned by big companies or wealthy governments who don't want to rely on those companies. And most people have a subscription to a private AI service. But how much we'll get out of them? Well, that'll depend on how much we can pay. You can already see this trend happening right now, that the more you want to do with an AI, the higher the cost. Now imagine that we have a few AIs that have a fair shot at finding a theory of everything or a cure for cancer or figuring out exactly what you need to put into a tweet to get a reply from Elon Musk. But that'll take up an enormous amount of compute. So it'll be very expensive. The result will be that the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer because they can't keep up. This is likely to happen both on an individual basis as well as on a national basis. And yeah, we could do something to prevent that from happening, but I don't think we will. Hello. Hi, Elon. I told you not to call me on this number. No, I'm not worried about AI at all. It's made the bot so much more interesting. Yes, and some of them sound just like Elon Musk. If you want to learn more about how neural networks work, I recommend you check out the neural network course on Brilliant.org, who've been sponsoring this video. The Neural Network course will give you a deeper understanding of how intelligent artificial intelligence really is with some hands-on examples. And Brilliant has courses on many other topics in science and mathematics too. Whether you're interested in neural nets or quantum computing or linear algebra, they have you covered. I even have my own course there. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll bring you up to speed on all the basics, interference, superpositions, entanglement, and up to the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. Brilliant is really the best place to build up your background knowledge on all those science videos which you've been watching. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine, you'll get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.